Hello, welcome to another video by Mox Marine. In this video, I'm uh, starting the assembly of a 6.2 Mercruiser V8. It's uh, very similar to the 5.7. Um, the difference is uh, it's got a longer stroke crank, this crank here, and it's a special crank. It's a forged crank, uh, very, very uh, stout, very heavy duty, uh, very nice piece. Um, but that is the primary difference between the 5.7 and the uh, 6.2. Um, because it's a, a different crank and the stroke is longer, which means this, this crank pin here is further out from the center line of the crank than a standard 5.7, so you get more stroke, more displacement. Um, the rods have to be specially uh, modified to it in order to uh, hit, avoid hitting parts inside the engine. So I'll discuss that later when I get to putting the pistons in. But for now, I just wanted to demonstrate that the uh, crankshaft is spinning freely in the block. I haven't even plasticated these bearings yet. What I do is I put them in with oil and just check that the crank rotates freely. And if it does, then I know that the bearings are okay. And then I'll go ahead and check my clearances just to be on the safe side. Um, that's a step that you might say waste time, but it's uh, something that needs to be done. It's the proper way to build a motor. Just check your clearances. Um, if they're too loose, I'm building a bad motor. Uh, if they're too tight, it wouldn't spin. So the spinning proves they're not too tight, but I do want to check that they're not too loose. The bearings I'm using are uh, this male um, MS909P1. The one means it's one thousandth of an inch smaller than stock, or bigger, I guess, thicker. So uh, I'm taking up a thousandth of an inch wear in this crank. By the way, I did not have the journal turned. All these journals are very, very smooth and very, um, feel no grooves, nothing with my fingernail. And uh, so I'm not gonna waste hundred dollars turning a crank that doesn't need it. Um, but anyway, so i um, got bearings in there taking up a thousand of an inch clearance. I'll check the clearances with the plastic gauge and then I'll bolt it in. Uh, I haven't even cleaned the crank yet. I wiped down the journals with a rag, put it in, check, with, check my uh, spin, and then take it back out, clean it, and then I'll plastic gauge it. Um, so one, uh, one scare I had with this motor is uh, when I was checking to make sure the camshaft was the right cam for this engine, which uh, it had a number 862562 stamped on the end of it. And I'll verify that in the description of this video after I check it. But um, I went and Googled that number just to verify that they had the right cam. And um, when I did that, I got a scare. It said that the bearings, I found a, a, a article on a, um, not an article, but a, a, a post in a forum out there. And it said that the bearings on the 6.2 are narrower because of the extra fillet uh, that, that the tracks have in the corners here. Uh, on the mains and the, and the rods. Um, so that was kind of a scare because these these are standard, these are just standard 5.7 bearings. And um, so what I did was I went into marineengine.com, uh, found the uh, part number of a 5.7 bearing and compared it to the part number of a 6.2 bearing and the part numbers are the same. So I think that was misinformation or bad information I got on the internet. Um, and that's the trick. Anytime you want to verify a part, um, compare it to another engine similar, check that, compare the two part numbers and if they're the same, it's the same part. No, they're, somebody got the wrong information. And besides, it does spin free, so that means that the bearing's probably okay. And when I take it apart, I'll check the edges of the bearings to see if they got a, like a shiny spot on them. If the, if the edge of the bearings were getting into these fillets here, uh, or, um, or fill it, whatever, um, if the edge of the bearing was getting into it, you'd see a shiny spot on the bearing where it's hitting that bearing or hitting that uh, journal and getting tight there. So that's another uh, benefit of spinning this thing. I'm gonna check the bearings that way too. So anyway, I'm um, about to start putting, uh, I'm about to wrap up putting the crank in. Um, I'm gonna, like I say, t take it back out, clean it, put it back on, check each uh, bearing, uh, main bearing with plastic gauge, but check my clearances. And once I do that, then I can tighten up all the main caps and then the uh, crank will be done. And the crank, the cam is also also done now. So um, stay tuned for the 6.2 build. I'm not gonna cover everything about it. It's, it's similar to other, uh, any other 5.7 build or any other 3.0, or excuse me, a 5.0 or 5.7. Um, it's just, I'll, I'll just highlight the differences between the 6.2 and the 5.7 as I go along. So stay tuned and uh, Let's put the 6.2 together. Okay, continuing with the uh, Mercruiser 6.2 liter rebuild. Um, I've just finished putting uh, eight piston rods on the pistons. These are press fit, uh, meaning they're really not press fit. That's the wrong thing to call it, but that's what they call it. Because uh, I heat the rod up and the, the wrist pin just slides in. I didn't really press it in, but anyway. Um, these are 
like I say, 383, 277 pistons. And um, there's a trick to this. Um, this is special about these type motors, the 383. If you notice, it's got valve reliefs on the top of the piston there. And there's no mark to show you which side is the front of the piston. There's a reason for that, because sometimes the front is going to the right, sometimes the front's going to the left. So it depends on which side the engine is on. But in all cases, if you look at the rod, there's a notch or there's sort of a ground off spot. Like that side is not ground off, but this side has a ground off spot on the side of the connecting rod. That always faces towards the uh, inside center of the engine, up towards it, because it's, it's ground off clear of the camshaft lobe. So um, in all cases, since these valve reliefs are pointing or up, pointing towards the center of the engine, and so is the uh, ground spot, it's easy to put the piston. You always put the ground, ground off edge of the connecting rod at the same size as the valve release. So it was just, it was a simple matter of putting these on. So um, I've got eight done now, you can see there. And um, it's now time to check the rings and install these pistons. But I just want to show you that that's the difference between a 6.2 and a 5.7. The 5.7 doesn't have this ground off edge on it. It also has, uh, it doesn't have valve reliefs. It has um, actually dish pistons all the way around. So there's no need for the uh, valve release. But, all right, I've got eight done and uh, about to move on with the rest of the installation. Um, I have a homemade piston pin press machine or press rig. So I've got a piece of wood jigged up here and a, a lag bolt I can turn in and out. That, that's my stop for adjusting the depth the uh, pin slides in. These two uh, screws hold the piston from moving. And then this bent nail here, I just twist around and it holds the piston down. Uh, sturdy enough for me to slide the pin in. Put the pin in the freezer, about two minutes. Um, put the piston in a, in a grill that I use uh, per, dual uh, purpose for heating rods and it works great. I've done this for several years now and it's no problem. So I'm about to put the pistons in this engine and we'll move on for the next step. Continue with this uh, 6.2 Mercury rebuild. I've now plastic gauged all the main bearings. Um, I've done uh, all of them and I'll just show you the last one. This is the main bearing on the very end, the thrust bearing. And that's the, uh, they're all typical of this. This is between 0 0.002 and 0 0.0015, which is an excellent uh, uh, clear. Okay, continue with this 6.2 Merc Cruiser build. Um, right now I've got the, uh, all the pistons are in, all the rod bearings are tightened up, uh, rod caps, these. The uh, windage tray is installed. Um, oil pump and oil pickup are installed. Um, so this is 6.2 Merc Cruiser and um, one of the things I read about when I was looking up the cam, uh, there was a comment in one of the, I think a, a forum offshore, uh, only offshore or something like that. I'll put it in the description of the post, but it said these nuts are tightened to 36 foot pounds. Um, they are different. They're look, they got a, like a chamfer on them right there. There's not a, it's not a square nut. It's got a little slope to it. So it is different. And so I suspect that there must be something to that. Um, I don't believe everything I read on the internet, but when I see something, it makes me want to look into it more. So um, I looked into it. I could not find anything else on it. So um, I did find the uh, Mercruiser manual for this engine, uh, service manual number 31. Downloaded that and I found that uh, for these 5.7 and 5.0, you tighten these nuts to 20 foot pounds and then additional, I believe it was 90 degrees. For this engine, you go 20 foot pounds and additional 45 degrees. So there is a different torque to these, so you need to uh, pay attention to that. Uh, this nut here, I've lost one of these. I've got one on order. This nut is a traditional standard nut. I will take it off and put the proper nut on it when it, when it gets here. But uh, so for that reason, I'm not gonna seal the oil pan up. We'll seal it until I get the uh, nut arrives and I can close up the oil pan. Um, so I hadn't said that. Um, I'm now about to put the front timing cover on. And uh, one thing you need to watch out for that is, um, so this is a fuel injected engine. And uh, because of that, it needs a uh, crank trigger. This is your four pole crank trigger that used on uh, V8s. If it was a V6, they don't have these, uh, there'll only be three of these. But you have to make sure you put this on first before you put your timing cover. It goes right here on the front of the crank. It's right there on the crank with the key, just like this. It gets, it put, gets pushed right up against your crank gear your uh, timing gear and then the harmonic bouncer squeezes against the sandwiches in between and keeps it secure um if you mess up <clears throat> if you have an engine that's carbureted you don't necessarily need this for the crank trigger but you do need it because it's a uh, some engines come uh, from the factory with that in there 
and it still spaces all your it spaces your front pulley out a little further and all your accessories line up so if you don't if you get to put your uh if you get to put this on before you put your time curl on they make a uh a spacer that can go in inside the seal so you don't have to take the front timing cover back off um, if you get an engine sealed up with the oil pan on it the front timing cover on it it's a pretty big deal to have to take the oil panel back off and the front timing cover off to get that to get this device in there so um Again, they make a part that'll go in there without having to take the front timer cover off. I'll put a link to that part in the description of this video. Again, you should always read the description of my videos because I put extra information I may not have covered in the video itself. Okay, about to put the front timing cover on. As you can see, there's a seal already on it. It's right here by my finger, and it goes all the way around the perimeter of the thing. Um, you do not want to. You do not put sealant on that rubber seal itself, but you do put sealant in another place, which I'll show you in a minute. I just wanted to show you the seal on this uh, timer cover that you uh, don't need to add sealant to. Um, let's see what it's going to say about the timer cover. Obviously, it's got the hole for the crank sensor there. Um, the fact that that hole is there and the fact that the trigger wheel is keyed to the front of the crank is what sets your timing. Uh, that's what the, the uh, computer is expecting to see, the location of those two. So I'm going to put some oil on this chain and then put this timer cover on and bolt it down. Right, the timer cover is now installed and I thought I'd just go ahead and show you this. This is that ring I was telling you about. It's a spacer for when you uh, have the uh, accessories that need the uh, crank trigger but if you forget to put it in or you have a motor that doesn't um, have the crank trigger but you need but you're using accessories uh, for that particular block. You can buy one of these. It's a spacer that goes. I can put it in now that the seal's in. I can slide it in there and it will uh, properly space out the accessories. Uh, it takes the place of the crank trigger in case you leave it out. Um, I'll put the description or I'll put the uh, a link to the, this part where you can buy it if you need it. So timing cover is now on. So as I was saying, when you put time cover, you you can have a leak. If you can't see it back in there, there's a little gap right there between the cover and the block that's not filled in by a seal. It's right in there. So you need to Pull, fill that up with silicone sealant when you put the uh, oil pan on. I think a lot of people when they put these, uh, if they have to replace their timer cover with the boat, with the motor still in the boat. So I've got this motor upside down so I can see the, uh, tell you what, I'm going to turn the flash on so you can see this hole. And I was saying, if you look down there, there's a gap down there. You can see that gap between the uh, engine and the uh, timer cover. You got to fill that up liberally with, uh, with a seal. It's supposed to come right through here and go right across there. But you can have oil up inside this front cover that can come. There's oil up inside your cover that can get past the seal from here to there. And it'll leak out right there. So you have to fill that in, that gap right there. We're still going to seal it. And like I'm saying, when you put the, if you do this with the engine upright, you will not see that gap. And uh, you're going to have a leak. So that's uh, something you need to watch out for. Um, since it's upside down, or since it's upside down, and I, now I can see it. But if you had this engine in the boat, you would not be able to see that very well. I think a lot of people miss that, and that's one of their uh, timing cover leaks after they put it in inside the boat. So uh, now that I've got this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna install the rear main seal and then uh, put the oil pan on, but I'm not gonna torque it down until I, uh, I'm get a, I gotta get a replacement nut for that nut right there. All right, I now have the oil pan installed temporarily on the engine. Uh, I need to get the crankshaft sensor and seal that hole up there. I need to put a half inch, um, it's a half by 20 threaded plug goes in that hole. But I'm going to put a um, rubber drain, a rubber oil drain line from that hole. Um, I make them custom myself. Over here, nothing. I'm going to put an oil filter on there to keep the dirt out. And again, this oil pan is temporarily installed because I have to uh, replace a nut on the uh, uh, on the connecting rod when it arrives. So uh, tomorrow, I'll put the cylinder heads on and. Uh, uh, I'm going to wire brush this engine, get all the old paint off, and then paint this engine. It's coming along.